All right, guys, I am going to point out to you guys um, the QR, QR code on your screen right now. Um, we have an interactive presentation for you guys this afternoon. So we want you to engage with us. So if you will take your smartphone out, if you'll pull up your camera app and you can actually put it over the QR code on your screen and it will give you a link to open up the WooClap app. Um, if you're not familiar, or excuse me, if you're not able to do the QR code, if you see in this blue writing, the website. Um, so if you go to www.wooclap.com and then you see that um, letter code, if you want to do that, you can also actually connect on your phone um, via SMS text. You can uh, do at L-F-E-U-X-T to that number in orange and you can participate that way. Zach, I think you're you're muted, Zach. Sorry. Still can't. Zach, you're muted, buddy. Oh, there we go. Amateur <laughs> hour over here, everybody. Um, <laughs> I hadn't done a webinar before. No. Um, hey, welcome, everybody. We're going to give you all a minute. Um, go ahead and get the, um, the WooClap set up. That's going to be how we mainly interact today uh, with, with the Zoom platform. A uh, few poll questions throughout, uh, but uh, and some information that's really going to help our team um, and, and help us along today. But I want to thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, we are just to give a little bit of, of an idea of what to expect. We're going to give you an overview of um, really what's going on this year. We only have an hour, so we're not going to get super in depth, but we're going to introduce to you or give some more context on the introducing the next generation to the skilled trades um, initiative, which is really groundbreaking. And, and many of you have started to participate in that uh, bit of an overview of, of program and teacher support opportunities that we're working on and, and, and have secure and will be delivering and then really how to maximize uh, the support that you're receiving from SEFCA, because that's exactly why we exist, is to support, support you on the front lines and what you're doing to reach, reach young folks. So also want to make sure you stay on to the end. Uh, we've got some, we've got a, a cool new video that's celebrating you uh, as, as a group of teachers and the impacts that are being made, uh, but also some really important, a really important opportunity to give us input uh, on the next direction that we take in support of you and your program. So uh, for us, it's all about meeting your needs as, as a teacher or an administrator um, or even a counselor, if we've got any counselors on here today. Um, but we're going to get behind you, the folks on the front lines that are impacting students, and that's what today will be all about. Um, speaking of, of that support and those folks, um, we've got a quick slide here. I want to introduce our K-12 team. Um, these are the people that we now have that are working on your behalf full-time, all the time, 24-7. When you've got folks as passionate um, about about CTAE and, and and teachers and reaching students and making workforce impacts, uh, we we tend to work all the time. But uh, it's it's a passion, and I'm so thankful to see the growth at SEFCA in this team. And um, you know we're making sure that that our ears are to the to the pavement, and um, and and we're working on behalf of you and, and what you're trying to do. So. Um, that's all we're going to do as far as team intros. I know you can see some of the faces, I believe, on the panelists, uh, but I want to get into a little bit of, um, you know, I want to hit a few highlights. Uh, we, we don't often stop too much and, and reflect. We kind of just have our head down and work and, and then look up and keep going. But we, you know, when we think about program support and some of the opportunities that are out there for your programs, I want to hit uh, you know, really in the last couple of years, the landscape has really, really changed regarding what's out there for teachers, for programs, um, and, and the integration of workforce and CTAE. And, um, you know, one, one big highlight is, is a million dollars in, in additional equipment funding uh, was delivered in the last two years through the Connect Act. And some of you on here, I know, uh, benefited from that. Uh, that was really the early alignment of, 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 bringing more funding into the CTAE space, um, aligning what we do with workforce impacts. And so specifically, 
uh, that was two years straight of $500,000 in additional investment into construction of metals programs uh, aligned with students earning industry credentials and program industry certification, which uh, is a big workforce tool. It, it drives partnerships into programs. It allows us to highlight programs and really show the alignment with business and industry needs. And so um, that was kind of where, where it started. And then the next step was the uh, Teacher Impact Fund. Many of you participated in this. Uh, the big long name is Construction Workforce Impact Award. That's more on the, um, you know, what, what we call it on the back end uh, on, on the paper, but Teacher Impact Fund, you know, aligning uh, and creating a, a, a workforce program that, that can give everybody a rating and tracking some key areas. You know, when we boil it down to uh, what are the, the few things we can do to all make impacts. Um, that, was, that was a program that rolled out with, with our partners at the Arthur and Blank Foundation, the Home Depot Foundation, the Bernie Marcus Foundation, as well as the state legislature contributed to that. And it's a public private fund and again, last year that started with construction of metals teachers, but this year, um, as intended, that fund is expanding. So this program is expanding um, and it will have counselors participating and it will have drafting teachers as well. So that was always the intent to grow it. We had to start with a small group, uh, but we gave out $250,000, a quarter million dollars last year, went directly to teachers uh, for their workforce impacts uh, in, in student credentialing, student industry certifications, um, student exposure to industry and careers, and then student placement on a, on a construction related career path. So all about getting kids to the next step. Uh, again, proud to expand that and keep that going for another year. Um, and that fund's bigger this year, it's growing. So we're excited about that. Also this year, uh, we've delivered 2,300 OSHA 10 training vouchers to teachers. Um, so those are the vouchers uh, and it's up to you all to go make sure those turn into licenses, but um, that's about a $60,000 value um, and it can really triple that. It, it, it can be almost a $180,000 value with some vendors uh, with what they're charging for that, but uh, that's an investment, you know, that, that we, we see loud and clear that um, students can benefit from and industry benefits from, and it's all about getting kids to that next level and, and starting that professionalism uh, early on. So proud to have done that. And then recently, uh, many of you were notified that you were a recipient uh, of our COVID relief support. And so over, over $50,000 in, in COVID relief funding, uh, we were able to carve out of our budget um, kind of unexpectedly, but just to try to fill in the gaps of all the unexpected things that have happened this year. And, um, and certainly we know that virtual learning has additional costs. And so we're proud to, to um, proud to be able to deliver that. And so that's 100,000 this year directly into programs off the bat. Um, and, and I really hope that um, y'all are feeling that support. And if you didn't know about it, <laughs> you got to engage with us. Um, and we, we'll make sure that you know about these opportunities and can take advantage of them. And then the last thing is, um, you know, is, is in that virtual learning space, something we're trying to take tackle head on with you. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a need that we've heard loud and clear. And it's really leveled the playing field. Everybody's equal and even you know, pretty much when it comes to having to start and figure things out from, from zero uh, when it comes to virtual learning in CTAE. Um, how do we take the things that have made our program so special, uh, that interaction and engagement and the hands-on component and, and, and make that happen somehow with a student on the other end of a computer or at their home? And that's been a difficult challenge, but our, um, what we've done is we've, we've invested in an LMS where you can all come together and, and figure that out together. And, and we can get those best practices in there. Um, we can take any content that, that, you, that you have that you would like to contribute for, for the good of the group at no cost. Um, and, and then we can make virtual adaptations to that as a group. And so you'll have an opportunity to be doing that uh, here very shortly. That's running right now with a smaller group of about 30, 30 teachers and that will grow. But um, that will um, that will link out and can be a portal to any other platform you're already using and it should integrate very seamlessly um, with with any other LMS your system may be using but um, you know we're 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 proud of the direction we're in and the support we've been able to deliver but today is all about you know we want to bring you in in the loop on on some of the why uh, behind that support um, and, and some of the things we're focusing on and and we truly believe we've got the best programs in the country. We've got the best teachers in the country. Uh, we got the best programs in the, in the country. We've got the best CTAE in the country. Georgia's on the map. Um, we're, we're so proud to, to be behind you. And, and really, you know, 
today is is a prof- little bit of a professional growth day or, or maybe the start of something for this year where, where we can determine a direction and next steps uh, for us all together as a group. Um, and, you know, somebody has to be the best. And, 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 and I really think that, you know, when we take that phrase, somebody's got to be the best, it might as well be me and not me, Zach Fields, me is in you. So um, you'll hear that, you'll hear me say that a couple times today. I think we've got a plan to get there. Um, and uh, we want you to inform that plan also as, as that evolves and changes. But we don't bring this up to brag on SAFCA, these impacts, these have all gone directly into programs uh, and, and the teachers, and we're gonna, we're gonna keep bringing it to you. Uh, but, but our main ask today is, is that you partner with us um, to figure it out and partner with us in these programs to make them successful. And um, yeah, we're, we're so thankful for the opportunity we have in front of us. Uh, we don't want you to miss out. And so it's really gonna come down to engagement um, and, and you'll have a, a great uh, start today and opportunities today on that. So um, I mentioned some of the why, some of the why behind what we are, um, you know, what we're focusing on. We'll go a little deeper into that, but I wanna ground us you know, and cut through the noise and everything else that's, that's going on in the world right now. And let's get us back to something very, um, you know, very pure, I believe. What, and, and that's the why behind, you know, when you decided to teach. So you could have done anything in the world. Um, most, many of you being in, in, in your field have a skill set, obviously, that can make you a lot more money somewhere else. Uh, but there was some reason that, that caused you to cross that line and, and say, hey, you know, I'm going to go get in front of kids every day. Um, and I'm going to teach them this craft or this trade. Um, and, and so I want to start with that. This is our first Woo Clap activity. So you'll, you'll pull up Woo Clap. Um, and this is a simple why. This doesn't have to be one word. It can be, be a little phrase, probably not a full sentence. But um, why do you teach? And I also want to point out here that if you are a little late to the um Woo clap game. If you see the top um, web link, the www.wooclap.com and go to that, use those letters, you're able to join in the presentation. I love seeing these. This is awesome. All right. So that the polling is now closed for that one. Yeah, that's great. Hey, um, Thank you all so much for that. I mean, I love that. That's so inspire, inspiring. I'm going to screenshot this. Um, this is going to be printed out, uh, I believe, on my desk for now on. But it's um, you all really affirmed what, what we already felt um, uh, was, was the why behind what you're doing, what I believe makes our group of teachers and our program so great. But most of this came down to a student and making a difference. Uh, it came down to uh, what impact you can have. Um, and I also love the one that says, because I'm good at it. <laughs> I love it. Hey, somebody's got to be the best, right? Might as well be you. Um, and, and, and there's plenty of that to go around, but um, that's, that's fantastic. So, you know, it really means something, um, I believe, when you get to go to work every day and, and, and do something that's going to change somebody's life. And, and I think that um, uh, we're very fortunate uh, to be in those roles. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, what better legacy to have than, uh, people are talking about you after you're gone and, um, you know, and you get, you help get them somewhere, you know, you did something for them and taught them something and connected them to something they couldn't have done themselves. And so I think that's really impactful. And um, uh, I think the more we focus on that, the more we can keep going. I mean, that helps push us through, through adversity and uncertainty and, and it's just, it's just keep going. So thank you all for sticking with it this many years. And if you're new, thank you for making the call uh, to do it, but, but nobody can replace you. Uh, we're thankful for you and, and sure am um, glad to see this. On that note, Aligned, I want to show you a, a quick video. This is about a two minute video of some students that came out of our programs, okay, K-12 pipeline programs across the state um, whose, whose lives have been impacted very recently uh, by a teacher. So check this out real quick. If you haven't seen this, um, this, these are young people that came out of our, 
came out of programs, out of your programs and, and made the step to industry. And you can kind of see what they're up to now. Volume. Volume. And then maybe restart, if you don't mind. We'll restart that with volume. <laughs> I was muted, I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe it starts as an interest, an escape. That moment when you think, not just, I can do this, but I love doing this. Are you happy with your career path? This is more fun I had is high school because in high school when they teach you this it's like kind of boring because books 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 everything you need to know is in the books but when you actually come here you actually learn I can't read a book and learn I have to do it so if you like me and you have to do something to read this is like a good job for you so how did you decide that you wanted to weld I took welding in high school because it counted as my senior math class and I ended up um competing for skills usa and i won first place in the state of georgia for welding sculptures and so from going from not even reading a tape measure to competing and winning welding sculptures the first year of me doing it was amazing and from that i actually got a full scholarship to welding school tell me about your experience with the career expo it's amazing you know because i would have never thought i would have been in this position there's some time where you feel at that one specific company, like, hey, I feel something, I feel a connection here. But it's about what your heart tells you to do, like, what, what you feel inside. Who helped you along the way to get into this career path? Absolutely. My high school construction teacher, I would not be here if it wasn't for him, showing me the opportunities. The first day of our class, he showed us that college wasn't the only route and that there's something out there for everyone. about SEFCA's success stories, leading edge programs, or show your support, visit SEFCA.org. SEFCA, building opportunities for Georgia and beyond. Maybe it starts- cool that? So sorry. Isn't that awesome? What a cool thing, right? And that really is what it's all about. You know, uh, probably some of you on this call were the teachers that those students were talking about, the specific ones. They might've come right from your program. So it's cool. It really is all about that impact. Hey everybody, I'm Ash. Uh, I know most of you hopefully on this call, some of you I may not have met yet, but um, I just wanna take a minute and uh, talk a little bit more. Uh, you know, Zach talked about the why we do what we do. That video I think really brings that home. It's all about getting those students, those opportunities, right? And many of you may be thinking something like, yeah, I, I want to make an impact, but where do I even start? So I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about how you can maximize your impact. So just about any time you hear from SEFCO, we're probably talking about our introducing the next generation to the skill trades plan, as Zach mentioned that. And that's our plan to partner with you to give students an understanding of the opportunities that are out there for them in the trades. And we know that you want to do more than just take up an hour of a student's time each day. You probably have students that make you feel that way, but you work so hard to prepare students for the next chapter in their lives. And for many of them, hopefully a lot of them, you're preparing them for a skilled trades career. And so with that in mind, we got together with our industry partners, with our foundation partners that Zach mentioned, with the DOE, and they all came together and helped us identify three priorities that maximize your impact. And you've probably heard us talk about these three things. It's industry exposure, credentialing, and placement. So we're gonna talk about each one of those for the next few minutes. And so the first one I'll dive into is industry exposure. Um, you all know that students need, need to be able to see it to be it, right? They wanna put their hands on something. The kid in the video said it perfect, books, books, books. They, they don't care about books, right? They wanna get in the lab, they wanna get in the shop and do something. Students need to see also that there are careers of all kinds in industry. And for many of them, there, there are opportunities that line up with their unique strengths. And exposure to industry establishes relevance, we think, and it can increase engagement. We think so many more students would lock in with your school, with your program, if they thought it was actually connected to their future successes, something that they could actually do and be successful at. 
So what are the best ways then to expose students to what's out there in the skill trades in your program? And I'm going to give you a few ideas. Hopefully these are things that many of you are doing already um, and maybe some ideas that you can start doing in your program. So the first is just guest speakers. I'm sure most of you bring some guest speakers into your classroom. That could be an industry professional, maybe somebody to talk about post-secondary education options or apprenticeships. Most of you guys know a guy named Chuck Little. He's probably been to your program before. Um, or maybe even a former student who's out there working in the trades. And you know, the awesome thing is this is easier now than ever in the virtual world that we live in, right? Um, you can virtually bring a guest into your classroom pretty much anytime you want to. Now, the added benefit is every time you actually bring a guest speaker to your class, physically in your classroom, you help drive and deepen program partnerships. And industry gets to see what we call their minor league team, right, in your program. So students that they potentially are going to put to work one day in their companies. And you can potentially even plant a seed about your top talent, right? Hey, Phil, see Edwin over there? He's going to be a top-notch electrician one day. You need to keep up with that kid. So another option you can use is engaging YouTube videos. And a lot of you have created YouTube videos that you shared with us. Maybe you've done sent some of those to your students and we were virtual, all virtual. And those things are just a simple way to showcase and highlight specific career options, right? Um, C.W. Matthews in Cobb County has some great ones that a lot of you are probably familiar with. Um, SEFCA has a library of YouTube resources. We call them trade talks. There's so many videos out there, so many options that are awesome for industry exposure. And the last thing we want to put on your radar is a partnership that we're really excited about that we formed with an organization called Be Pro, Be Proud. Now, Be Pro, Be Proud is a mobile unit that comes to your school so students can explore in-demand skilled trades careers with hands-on interactive experiences. It's gonna be at Berkmar and some in Hall County, you guys over in Hall County, um, this fall even. And then hopefully in the spring, we're gonna get that thing all over the state. So you'll be hearing much more from us in the spring about Be Pro, Be Proud, but that's something if you wanna Google it, Be Pro, Be Proud Georgia, and you can check that out. The bottom line, though, everybody, is that each of these options help make those connections and let successful industry people reinforce what you're always telling your students, right? We know how hard you try to drive home work ethic and all the opportunities that are out there in industry. We talk so much about industry exposure because we want to help you facilitate that moment when somebody might come into your classroom for the first time and a student finally gets it, right? That light bulb moment when uh, that light bulb goes off for a student and it's something that you've told them over and over again, but then they hear it from a new voice and they finally get it. So industry expo exposure, we think helps students put it all together. And in a lot of cases, it directly connects students and industry. So we're excited about it. We hope it's something that you'll emphasize, something that you'll share with us, what you're doing in your program. Uh, some of you may be doing things that we didn't mention. Um, of course, that's not an end all be all list of things. So share those ideas, keep them coming, but whatever it is that you're doing in your program, it always pays dividends to show your students what it looks like in the real life to be a part of the industry. So we're gonna jump back on WooClap real quick and we're gonna answer this question, what barriers do you sometimes feel getting industry to engage with your program? So jump back on. You might have to hit the refresh button on your Woo Clap, and we'll jump on and see if we can share some cool ideas with each other. Wow, industry's killing it. Yeah. No, no barriers. Well, I guess there's a lot some of time. A lot of interest. Time, time, time. I wonder if that's time to uh, connect and engage with them or uh, time to squeeze that into the programming that you already have. That's interesting. Sometimes industry is afraid to take chances on students. Wow. Hopefully we can help that go away. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, of course, COVID-19 is a big barrier. But at the same time, you know, again, we talked about those virtual options. That's something definitely to lean into. Um, you know, we talk all the time about getting industry to create uh, virtual 
tours even of their companies to send over. So maybe you can get with some of your industry partners, maybe um, your advisory board and, and get some uh, resources sent over from those guys. All right, I'm gonna turn it over to Matthew to talk about credentialing. Thanks, Ash. Good afternoon, everybody. For those of you I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Matthew White, and uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about why credentials matter. Um, most of you know that credentials do matter, all the way up to the federal level. Perkins 5 calls them credentials of value, and with this use of language, they are essentially referring to the way that industry can recognize student skill development, um, you know, skills that will allow a student to get a step ahead as they start down a professional track. Fundamentally, credentials aren't intended to be obtained you know, by jumping through hoops, but are designed to acknowledge the instruction and training you provide your students and to show how that training aligns to industry needs through the use of a common language. Credentials are portable. Nationally recognized credentials allow individuals to travel anywhere in the country, and even state recognized credentials can help to establish a baseline of skills and qualifications that someone possesses. Online credential training, such as CareerSafe or American Ladder Institute, can be extremely valuable tools for all teachers uh, as a regular part of the curriculum or possibly even an emergency um, remote learning session, as you may have experienced in the last few months. Uh, workforce investment in programs grows as the number of industry-recognized credentials being awarded will continue to show the high level of training being offered by and the skills that are being developed by the students consistently through that training you're providing. Some industry members in your area may not care as much or may care more about credentials than others, but as more credential students enter the local job market, an increase in the understanding of what your program provides will help to clear barriers and open opportunities to get future graduates hired. Because salaries and pay scales fluctuate by region and skill level, credentialing helps to serve as a framework for getting students paid closer to their skill level. You know, when they, uh, when getting future students hired. Most of the credentials that are on a replacement, we know this, for a student being able to make a great first impression, consistently show up on time, or the one that has a tenacious work ethic. However, industry credentials will help to elevate that student above other students with those same traits. If you haven't already, you need to start the process of establishing the relevance of the credentials to, for student buy-in. This is one of the ways to make gains and some others, you know, could include uh, examples like getting guest speakers to talk about OSHA 10 credentials and why their company recognizes them. Um, as equal to the importance of student buy-in is buy-in by their parents or the guardians. Uh, help them to understand that credentials earned by the student can not only validate their skills, but they, that they developed an added value and substance to the resumes or post-secondary education applications. You need to, you can look at providing regular updates to parents. A lot of you have started doing, uh, celebrating successes of your students getting their OSHA 10. I know Ben Lowe uh, has started doing a celebratory wall of the students getting his OSHA 10, but that's internal. And it's a great way to celebrate, but parents need to see this as well in a way. And so if you have website access or there's a place that parents check in regularly, update it so that they can see what these students are achieving. Uh, that's going to get out there into the industry to see what's happening and what those students are getting from those credentials. And then look for alternative credentials with local industry members uh, that they'll find valuable. Uh, this will provide an opportunity for increasing the engagement with your industry members. I know you just did a poll on, you know, what was an issue with uh, crossing those barriers. And so usually if you go to them with some kind of ask where they get to have input, it gives them a chance for buy-in. Uh, some instances of alternative credentials could be that American Ladder Institute, which is really only a 20 minute credential, but it's a very valuable one. Anybody wants to know that a student is safe, uh, checked out to use safe uh, use of ladders. And then another option could be the powder actuated nailer offered by Hilti or Ramset, who will come in and certify every one of your students in one day, or possibly even a boom lift training taught by a local industry member or even an equipment rental company. Uh, before I wrap up, get to my poll questions that I've got to ask you, I want to remind you that um, in the end that it is true that credentials provide value to your students. The more important fact to remember is that you and the training you are providing is what gives value to those credentials. The next step for you is to make sure that other people outside of that program know that as well. So now to my poll questions and back to the Woo Club. So what credentials are you currently delivering? I think they can click on multiple choices options for this one. So any of them that you're currently offering 
uh, click here, we're going to have a follow-up question that's going to allow you to enter any that you're thinking about or considering offering. We're getting some coming into the uh, chat window there because they're not able to get to the Woo Clap. You got about 30 more seconds. Does this one not show where they clicking or anything? Like that? Yeah, I'm not sure if it shows the real time on that one for some reason. All right, so that ends that one. And my follow-up question to that is, what credentials are you looking to add this year or looking for adding in the future? We can help with that OSHA 10. Forklift training is cool. I'd love to know more about that. The only downside to the forklift training that I know of the logistics programs is students have to be 18 to be able to take it. So that is awesome. I'm going to jump in. So my name is Liz and um, I recognize a bunch of you guys on the call today. So it's good to see that you guys are on. I appreciate it. Um, and I'm going to hear, I'm going to be talking about placements today. So in our eyes, placements are what it's all about. Do we see it all the way through? You know, do we help that student get to the next level? So this is where we see your hard work pay off as students actually go to work or continue to refine what you've taught them in a tech or a trade school. The skills, as we know, we just talked about, the skills are invaluable in and of themselves. But when they translate to career opportunities, that's when it's rewarding for you and the student. So direct placements are, are what help us tackle that lost decade. You know, we see all the time that a student leaves high school, you know, they kind of meander around, take maybe take multiple jobs or try to figure it out. And then they don't show up back into one of a like a training program or a construction um, related program until around 28 years old. So studies show that 70% of students attempt a four-year degree, but only half of them actually complete one. And then on the flip side, only 20% of jobs in the U.S. require a four-year degree. So I've pulled up the governor's honor, or excuse me, governor's office of student achievement or GOSA report. So we can kind of look at this student outcome. Um, we partner with, excuse me, partner with DOE and the Department of Labor to collect data on the outcome of students post-graduation. And so again, you know, we talked about that 70% um, in 23, in, excuse me, 2013, 70%, um, you know, around were enrolled in a post-secondary program. Um, after five years, so if you take a look at the uh, pie chart on the left, 56% um, of those graduates have no credential, they're not enrolled anywhere, and they're not attempting to. So if you break that down um, and look at this next chart on the right, um, if you look at the green tab that says 29%. So what that looks like is in five years, 29% of those students actually earned a post-secondary credential. So let's put that into some real numbers. So the average student population has around 130,000 seniors. So that 25% is actually roughly around 38,000 students that after five years earned a credential somewhere. So your challenge is to show them a different path. So take 
you know, our video that we just saw earlier with Evan McGee talking about that. His construction teacher showed him a different option immediately while he was in class. So youth science, I'm sure that you guys are familiar with that career and aptitudes assessment. Youth science data shows us that 25% 25, 25 of students in public schools are a great fit for our industry. So what that breakdown actually looks like is roughly 10% are directly for skilled trades and, the, and another 15% are those construction administration careers. So your project managers, your architects, your engineers. The students in your construction classes are much likely higher than that 25% since most of those students chose to take construction. So let's say upwards of half of your students could be suited to find their way to a successful career in construction with your help. So bottom line is that we want to close that gap. We want to get them exploring earlier while you have a captive audience in your classroom so that they can say, see the different options. Oop, Ash, you're muted. <laughs> Darn mute button. Hey, thanks, Liz. Really appreciate you showing us that. Hey, so I don't know about all of you, but uh, those stats are pretty eye-opening to me. But that said, I want to take us back and remind us that every stat that we just read, everything that Liz just told us, really represents your individual students. So that's why, like, when Matthew and I spend a lot of time emailing you and calling you and texting you, hopefully you don't feel like we're harassing you. But, you know, when we do that, to find out contact information about Devin or Justin or Eliana, um, you know, we're doing that because we care about your individual students. That's why our placement team, first of all, that's why we have a placement team, but that's why they spent weeks and weeks calling employers and schools last spring to verify that they are where we think they are. That's why we have a whole page of Sefka's website dedicated to the stories of people whose lives have changed because we work for individuals and you work for individuals too. You know the names of your students. And I, as a matter of fact, I'd be willing to bet that each of you could name the students who with a little bit of your help and maybe our partnership can become one of those success stories. So we thought it'd be really cool right now to, to just bring us back to that, to that idea of the individual. So if you will jump real quick, jump back on WooClap and we just just want you to name a few of those students, not last names, but just first names, the first names of those students who are in your program that really could be impacted by all the things that we're talking about today. So a few minutes and just throw some names up for us. We'd love to see uh, who those individuals are that we're working for and that you're working for. That's awesome. Man, I see them popping up. It's so cool. And by a few minutes, he means about uh, 33 more seconds. <laughs> I love it. I can restart it if we want. This is great, though. Yeah, no, this so, is great. I love this. Yeah, this is getting printed out as well. I know. Gosh, that's awesome. Wow. We got to get them, y'all. Mm -hmm. Let's get them. We had a question while we're waiting for that to count down. What what percent of jobs require a, a college degree? Do we have that handy? So require yeah, a four 20. year degree is 20%. 20%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a seven, there's a seven two one mm -hmm. um, figure um, where 70% do not require um, a, a degree. They may require some certifications. Um, three require uh, a bachelor's degree or above mm -hmm. out of every 10 jobs. Those are awesome. Hey guys, keep throwing those up there. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep trucking. Uh, thank you for letting us see those names, that's powerful. And that really does drive home the idea that these are individuals, again, that, that we're talking about today. And um, that's such a big deal. So basically here's the deal we're working hard to put a thousand individual students on a career path this year and with your help we're going to work for your individual students who you know who you're advocating for who you just put on this list 
And, you know, the other thing is reaching this goal is going to help us continue to receive this funding that allows us to do all the great programs that we're doing to support you and your students um, from these foundations, from the DOE, um, from our industry partners. But on the flip side, without your partnership, we can't do any of it. All those programs that Zach started off the, this call talking about, they're all going to shut down and go away if you stop partnering with us. So you're just so valuable. And I, I hope you hear us say that um, you're the most valuable piece of this whole puzzle. But you're not in this alone, right? We've, again, we've got a whole placement team with career coaches to help give your students information and resources. So here's a few ways to engage with us, ways to connect us with your students so that we can continue to engage with them and work for the individual students that you teach. The first one is to have your students te text career path to 31996. And again, that's going to directly connect them with one of our career coaches who can dive in with them and give them individualized advice about where they are, where their interests are, and what their best options might be. The next thing is to always lean into your industry partners, of course, um, your advisory boards. Um, those, those guys are so valuable because they're the industry in your area, right, that your students are going to go to work for. The next thing is the TCSG partnerships. Get to know the tech and trade school individuals around your area, the, the people that counselors that you need to connect with so that you can help your students who are ready for that next uh, post-secondary education to get them more education about um, in the trades. Uh, the next thing, again, is to lean into our placement team. Um, you know, if even without that text career path thing, you can reach out to one of us, reach out to somebody on our team, and we will help engage them. Um, there's a, another program that SEFCA does in the metro Atlanta area called Construction Ready, and you may have some students that are great candidates for that, and we're going to train them and put them directly to work. So you know all this, right? You know that the stats represent your real students. And we just wanna invite you to please take advantage of some of these ways that we can help partner with you to put your students on a career path. So real quick, we're gonna jump back on WooClab and we wanna ask you to do this. Rank your biggest challenges in getting students placed directly into a job or on a career path out of high school. Um, so take a look at those options. There might be uh, maybe None of those fit, so you can just choose other. But take a few minutes and rank those for us, and we'll take a look and see how everybody's feeling out there. That's really interesting. I wonder mm -hmm. how much of those things we can actually inform, right? How many of those things can we speak into and um, remove some of those challenges even? That's good stuff. Thanks so much for sharing that stuff with us. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really great information. I, I, we really appreciate that, y'all. I'm John Wilhoy on Sefka team. Um, yeah, look, y'all sharing those challenges. Some of them look familiar. Um, student apathy comes to mind. Um, man, yeah, some of them, some of those are new to me at least and, and may not be new to our team, but uh, we definitely want to know about them so we can help you navigate them, see how we can better support you through that. Um, by the way, y'all, if you hear some uh, some construction noise at, uh, in the background, I apologize, but uh, I know y'all are no strangers to uh, listening to and speaking around uh, construction noise. So I appreciate your patience through that if you hear any of that. Um, but look, you know, despite those challenges that you have, so many of you are already making just rid ridiculously huge impacts and you're doing so much great work. But the challenge that we have, if we're, if we're while we're talking about challenges, is we don't know about it in a lot of cases. Um, that's really one of our biggest challenges is knowing about all the impacts that you're making. So the single biggest way you can partner with us, if you like the things that we're doing, um, 
for your programs or for uh, other programs around the state is partner with us. Take a little bit of time to report some of the awesome things that you're doing um, and that you have happening in your program. And, and I don't want y'all to be thinking about this when you hear reporting. I know it's like nails on a chalkboard. It's not like somebody's breathing down your neck or checking up on you or grading you. This is really just a way for us to brag about you. Um, this is, this is a, for us to be able to show the supporters you know, that, that we're working with um, that help support all these programs that, that we funnel into you, how much of an impact you're making. And, and you might be asking yourself, why is this even important? I, you know, why, why do y'all care? And, and really, honestly, because that's what enables us to continue to be able to do the things that we do for you. It helps uh, drive investment into things like the impact fund, which if you look at it after this year, at the, at the end of this school year, it'll be over half a million dollars that we're investing in your pockets. It's not, it's not uh, theoretical, it's not abstract, it's going straight into your pockets. Um, and, and it also allows us to show, you know, show the, the, show the different um, people that are aligned that want to support these efforts and, and this workforce development what our programs, which y'all can do and, and why, why y'all matter and, and that y'all need more resources and let's just lobby on your behalf. So when you report your metrics, you're not just, you know, I know that you're not just doing it only to in, increase your impact dollars. We know that. Um, we know that you didn't teach to get rich. Both my parents were teachers. Um, I know that all too well, but, but really, you know, it is going to do that. It is going to make your impact fund bigger um, in June, but also it's making things better for all programs across the state. In other words, guys, basically what I'm saying is we're all in this together. So Thanks, John. Hey, I'm going to jump in real quick and point out the power of that partnership. So just to break it down for everybody, we have about 180 programs across the state skilled trades programs in Georgia public schools. And of those 180, only about 50 of you reported your impacts with us last year. So if twice that many would share, we would easily double our results. Um, so I have a quick ask of each of you, just as a great best practice, I wanna challenge everybody on this call to start regularly monthly reporting. So take a look at your calendar, maybe even right now, just peek at it on your phone and identify a hole in your schedule, either at the start of the month or at the end of the month for 20 minutes when you can take, take a little bit of time and report the metrics that have happened in your program that month. And the benefit of that is more assured validation of those metrics gives us more time on the back end to validate those and increase the likelihood that those impacts are credited to you this school year, which means more money in your individual impact award in June. Um, but also it all just, again, like John said, it just kind of keeps the system going. You're so right, Ash. So, you know, when we talk about reporting, the low hanging fruit right now is that 500 plus remaining placements that were reported last year, but we weren't able to verify. So by now you should have received an email probably from, you know, Matthew or Ash talking about the lists of unverifieds that you have in your program. So you've already done most of that heavy lifting already. We just need your help with better info from, you know, the students directly or the employer contacts, just so we can get that captured, you know, um, even just let them know to be on the lookout uh, for an email from us, you know, just make continuing to make that connection. So be on the lookout as well. We're going to send out a survey um, that kind of is going to capture those past placements, kind of a where are they now? Um, you know, for example, if you're talking to a student and they're texting the 31996, um, that is directly, you know, in contact with me and, you know, and, and our placement team. Um, we want to, you know, let encourage our students to continuously engage with our placement team. You know, we're going to send emails, we're going to send texts, and, you know, we, we want that engagement, you know, so we can continue to get them placed. Um, you can also report through the K-12 Pipeline app. We heard your feedback earlier in the year and have been working to streamline the overall user experience. So, Expect to see those changes, see some of the overhaul that we've done um, to make that simpler and faster for you. You know, keep logging into the app, keep seeing those changes we're making and keep, 
reporting to us. Uh, you know, the key thing here is that data and those metrics are the key to sustainability for all of those programs that we started off talking about today, and, you know, that John mentioned. So, you know, the Impact Fund, the Connect Act grant, COVID, COVID relief grant funding, and CEFCA virtual. So all of those funding sources we mentioned, they want to see the gains that you're making. Um, and we're only able to report to them what you're, will, you're, what you're willing to take the time to report to us. So we want to be able to quantify your impact and drive those investment into our programs. So I've got one more poll question for you guys on placements, excuse me, on reporting and all of that good stuff. And that is, what are the biggest obstacles preventing you from reporting your impact? That's great feedback. Thank you for that feedback. Yeah, Ash's beard is pretty distracting sometimes to all of us on the Sefka team. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a big obstacle. <laughs> I see Scott, you know, thanks. Thanks for that in the chat, Scott. Wow, it looks like uh, Ash's beard is one of the biggest obstacles and we're gonna have to have him shave it. <laughs> Sorry, Ash. Is it, just, is it just physically in the way? Or emotionally, you know, we don't know. All right. Zach, you're on mute. You're I'm up. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. I was zooming in on the um <clears throat> I was zooming in on the on those those reasons. Well, we've got uh, and thank you all for that. I can't tell you how much that helps our team. Uh, get better, dial things in, and ultimately, um, you know, provide better service to you all. So thank you all for uh, sharing that information. Uh, so some next steps. Uh, you, you've heard a lot um, today. Uh, a lot of it was a deeper dive into, um, I think, more understanding around, you know, credentialing, placement, uh, student exposure to industry, but also uh, some steps that uh, or some things that could really benefit your program, the work you're doing, um, uh, to make greater impacts. We were trying to build an entire structure around that. So, um, <clears throat> you know, if, if, if we're viewing some of those earlier resources or the OSHA 10 going out or the COVID relief support going out, uh, or even the, the quarter million, you know, uh, impact fund that went out last year, if you're like, Hey, I didn't know about any of this, or I must've missed that. Uh, we don't want that to happen, uh, at all. We want, um, we're, we're here to serve you and your program. So we really want, um, you know, you'd be able to take full advantage of that and also to give us information to help make us better uh, at, at what we're doing here. You know, we don't want to be spinning our wheels uh, here at SACA. We want to be making impacts, moving the needle, uh, moving the ball down the field, so to speak. So main thing is going to be engagement. Uh, you've heard it a few times, but let's keep driving that engagement uh, with, a, with a person at SAFCA, with, with a territory um, uh, director like Ash, Matthew, most of you know Liz, you, you guys, most of y'all have my cell phone number, love hearing from you. Um, so let's just make sure we're communicating on a regular schedule uh, or just, just checking in is great. Uh, on that, uh, we wanna determine some kind of schedule uh, and format to connect more often and, and more, more frequently, um, you know, whether that's a webinar or just more of a small group gathering uh, via Zoom, whatever it may be, uh, we wanna find out what works for you. That will be in, in another survey we're gonna do. Um, some other things that can happen right now is, um, you know, if you want to make a run at industry certification for your program, that is also uh, an impact fund item. Um, the reason is it's a really good workforce development tool that allows us to lift up programs, to elevate them, uh, but really showcase them, show them off and, and show them to industry and drive more partnerships and resources into programs. Um, so if you're thinking about that, uh, we've actually waived all fees for that this year as another uh, manner of, of COVID relief for programs. 
Uh, I don't even know how many more we can take this year, but certainly if you wanted to get in the funnel for next year, um, you know, the DOE grant um, that, that is submitted by your CTA director through CTERN, that's going to open up in March and be available through mid-May. Um, there are some things that, that, that will need to be in place for DOE to approve that grant or to give you a good shot. And that's about usually $5,000 for a recertification, $10,000 for your program for an initial certification if you've never been certified. Uh, but we can help you. And we actually have Roy Rux on our staff, who's fantastic, um, who's worked with CTA directors across the state for years. He's really familiar uh, with the Department of Education process on that. It can help help you, help your CTA director, uh, position you guys really well to, to nail that grant. We'd love to help with that. Um, but also, here's the deal. If you're not, if your program is not industry certified, you're having to work harder uh, from an impact fund standpoint uh, to catch up because they are getting points for that. Um, so your 10 placements that you may make out of your program, which is the main thing um, for an industry certified program, that's going to kind of feel like 15 placements uh, for them. Um, so you, if, if you're not certified, um, you know, you aren't, you aren't, um, you know, you're not getting the full benefit that you could be getting. Um, and, and listen, Seth has done different, um, you know, Seth could very admittedly has, has sometimes we've been great at certifying programs. Other times we've fallen short as well. Um, uh, but it's a process we're always trying to make better. And, and I think we've got it really, really close now, but, um, you know, more user-friendly, we're driving that, um, and, and, and relevant, authentic, basically if your program's connected to industry and, um, and, and you're teaching industry relevant, um, things to your students and it's really apparent, um, and industry's bought in, we're going to be great with it. Um, uh, there's also something that, uh, from an NCCR standpoint, um, this year, we have suspended the NCCR requirement for programs to be industry certified. We'll see what that looks like next year. Uh, but the bottom line is like, you know, if you're on industry recognized curriculum and, and you're delivering credentials to your students, um, you're going to be pretty good in that category. So just want that on your radar. Um, we have an ICTP, an instructor certification training program scheduled for Monday and Tuesday that have two people signed up. So um, if you're one of those two people, uh, we may be pushing that back. I want that on y'all's radar. If you haven't seen it in C-Turn or, or caught the email from DOE on that and you know you need it, we need to hear that today uh, from you in order to determine whether we're going to um, you know, push that out or not. Uh, the other things that can happen right now is, is work to open a feeder program. Um, the vertical alignment of CTAE is, there's a lot of momentum on that right now. There's funding for it. We can help you connect the funding for middle school um, program openings. We are, we have elementary programs now that are going where every kid in a grade level is taking construction. And, and one thing that'll do, that's going to address a really common, um, you know, thing we hear from teachers is my program is a dumping ground, you know, for students that don't want to be here. And, and when I see a challenge, there's a lot of reasons for that, but when I see a challenge, I'm like, well, what part of that can I control? And, and here's what I want to tell you. If you don't have room on your roster, right, you can't be a dumping ground. And, um, and, and the, the time and effort uh, invested in getting a, a middle school program up and running or elementary is going to let every kid in that school get a taste of construction. And you're going to have a lot of kids choosing your class. Uh, coming in as freshmen or sophomores. So we want to help you do that. We've got a team that specializes in that, uh, specifically in those program openings. We'd love to connect you. And the other thing um, is SEFCA Virtual. We've already mentioned this, but that's a place where um, all of our resources can come together. All of you can connect with each other. Um, and, you know, it'd be really cool for your students to hear from a lot of different people throughout the state and video-based lessons or just uh, letting you have lessons to make your own, all again with a virtual adaptation. Um, and from an impact fund standpoint, if you're doing industry exposure through there, um, it'll be automatically be verified. So if your kids are watching these K-12 graduates succeeding in industry, y'all, that's an industry exposure uh, right there that's automatically verified. So we think we can streamline a lot in there, uh, give you a home. There's about 29 teachers right now doing a beta test on that. Uh, it'll, we're going to open that up here very shortly. So uh, we'd love to have you in there. And it's going to allow you to load, create content, and, and connect with one another. So um, We'll do a real quick preview of the SEFCA virtual. This is like a 30 second deal, but it'll, it'll give you a little bit of an idea of what it's looking like. Designed by teachers like you, for you. Instructors will be able to copy the lessons from the courses taught by their peers, bring them seamlessly into their own customized courses. Every teacher will have the opportunity to contribute to the learning repository. 
And let's not forget the available learning features instructors can select from to fit their specific teaching needs. Each instructor will have the ability to control their rosters with easier steps and no access codes. Using a combination of badges and certificates, Seth the Virtual will have self-paced learning paths coordinate with your teaching style to motivate students to take ownership of their learning. And to help instructors with on-demand, content-specific training, we have created an Instructors as Learners course, which among other things will include discussion boards for direct access to knowledge and support of other instructors, no matter where they are. Sefka Virtual, a learning management system designed for you. So I'm just going to jump in here, y'all, just to uh, touch on that. I mean, it, that's that's just a high level overview. I know that was 30 seconds of of trying to explain a really robust system, but we made a significant investment in, into uh, creating this platform to based off of some feedback that we got, and and that's it was primarily initially due to all the virtual learning needs, but I. We all think that this is actually going to be a huge asset for you, even beyond any sort of COVID environment. Um, I also want to tell you real quick that, that um, hang in there with us, guys. We only have a few more minutes, and then and then we've got a, a really cool uh, a video we want to show y'all that we feel like it's going to be a treat. But um, currently on the on the uh, Sefka Virtual, the LMS that, we, that we're doing, we have about thirty teachers who are helping beta it now and give us feedback, help work out bugs and kinks. Uh, and it'll be opened up to all teachers really, really soon. So please be on the lookout for some more detailed information in your email box if you aren't already on it. Um, look, I want to tie all this together a little bit. Um, but but you know, first, what I want to do is, is highlight the work that you did last year. If you take a look at, Liz, if you don't mind putting up the slide up, um, for the, what they've achieved last year, um, this is a quick look at what what y'all helped produce last year, okay? 12,436 uh, students exposed to the industry, 578 placements. The way that I look at that is that's, that's the way we all look at that is that's 578 lives, students who are now on a career path in the construction industry and that y'all played a part in. And so we're just really grateful, wanted to lift up and say thank you. That your engagement with us and your, uh, your work towards that, uh, reporting with us, that was that enabled us to get to at least 100% of our goals in each one of the categories that, that we were doing. And um, yeah, so why that's important is some of y'all know that we received some uh, grants from a joint effort from the Home Depot Foundation, Marcus, Bernie Marcus Foundation, Arthur Blank Foundation. And, and honestly, we're accountable for metrics too. So, so the metrics that we report to them is directly tied to the funds that, that we turn around and, and use to provide you with support. So that's just, again, to reiterate why it's so important for us to engage together. And, and like Ash said, I mean, in other words, it'll, it'll determine whether we can continue to deliver these, this, all this support or if it'll just uh, evaporate. And that's including things like the impact fund. So, you know, thank you, great job. Now, I wanna show you a, a, just a, a quick, um, snapshot of the goals for next year. So if you notice, our goals for next year have doubled this up this year, the current year, sorry. Our current year, school year, the goals for this year um, have doubled over last year. Now, exposure is a little bit misleading because we we actually um, like doubled our, our exposure goal last year, but our goal is 12,000 exposures, uh, 66 certified programs. We're well on our way to that. 6,200 student credentials. That's a big lift. We need everybody hitting those ladder safety and NCCR and everything, uh, OSHA 10s. And then the the um, the coup de grace, the thousand placements. Um, yeah, that's um, that is is a big lift. I mean, we our goal last year was 500, and so, but like Liz said, there's some low lying fruit out there, y'all. We have, uh, I think there's something like 500 or, or some, there's a big number of students that, that we got reported that went into industry that we hadn't been able to verify whether we didn't have uh, accurate contact information for the employer or, or something. So if you can get, you know, take that list that the, the territory director sent you and, um, and go through it and just uh, find, find some of those to verify, that would be, um, that'd be, that'd be really awesome. Um, you know, look, it doesn't have to be, I know this sound big and, and doubling goals sounds big, but it's, it doesn't have to be like climbing Mount Everest. 
there's some really easy ways for us to get there if we all work together just have to make intentional actions incremental steps to get there um, and we'll all make a huge impact together i mean dale hells is an example he he delivers ladder safety to every single one of his uh, students you know every time they get into his class it's it's, it's free it takes 20 minutes and and every kid needs to be able to get on a ladder safely um, on a job site so just to, to recap really quickly the top three things to reach the goals number one engage with us um, talk to your territory director reply to our surveys um, uh, read any updates look for our emails please um and check your junk mailbox if 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 you haven't seen one because we've sent it to you uh number two engage with your local industry partners and and tell us about the challenges that you're having with them it was really great to see some of those some of those challenges you gave us because if you help us and tell us about these specific scenarios we can help you navigate them we can um go and lobby for you and the last thing is speak with your students. I know that sounds pretty silly. Like, of course, I'm going to speak with my students. I'm a teacher. But, but really, even just have, having dialogue outside of, of just um, classroom content. I mean, y'all saw the video earlier where, um, where Evan McGee said uh, that the only way he knew about this is because his high school uh, construction teacher told him about it. Um, look, y'all, his teacher planted a seed, and, and that seed changed his life. So, so just talking with your students and, and planting those seeds, you planting a seed could, could change the trajectory of your students' lives. That's right. Yeah. Yep. That's what it's all about. Um, and, um, you know, I'm going to have say a quick word about this, this survey stuff. Y'all email, email communication is the quickest way for us to get info out really quickly uh, to the masses and get feedback uh, from the masses. Same with survey. So, Nobody likes email, nobody likes surveys overall. Just know that at least with this one, you know that we're intently listening and paying attention. All we're trying to do is align our efforts um, with, with things that are gonna support you and, and help make those impacts to your students. Uh, so you'll get one, uh, you probably have one in your inbox about now, don't jump on it yet. Uh, we're about to wrap here, um, but, but we'd love for you to do that after. That's gonna give us our next directions. And again, just make sure we're aligned uh, with, what, with what your needs are as a teacher or somebody trying to impact students. Um, the, and lots of virtual, there'll be some virtual learning questions in there too that we're really trying to figure out and, and getting started on leading on as a group, um, you know, as a state really. Um, we want to show you a video, um, you know, John's mentioned impacts. Uh, you all put a name up earlier. I think that's really, really powerful. Um, we want to show you kind of the celebration of that from last year. Um, this is a little bit of a behind the scenes look at uh, when we distributed these impact fund checks. We visited uh, four or five programs in the state, uh, got to talk to students, got to interview teachers, uh, really got into the why of what they do. It's really, really powerful. Uh, this video is not going to show the, that entire why, uh, but it's going to show a cool, uh, just some cool moments of, of those impact checks going out last year. Um, and just so y'all know, the range of those checks, I mean, uh, those awards, $10,000 was the top award, um, you know, and, and most, most people in the top 10 were in the uh, nine to eight to seven thousand dollar range and it, it went all the way to 110 teachers all the way down to a few hundred bucks and so there's room for everybody in there come make an impact um but let's check this video out and then we'll, we'll wrap it uh just after <laughs> Hello, I'm Scott Shilar, President and CEO of SEFCA, the Construction Education Foundation of Georgia. We know how hard you are working to introduce the next generation to skilled professions and preparing many of them to pursue careers like carpentry, welding, plumbing, and electrical. So earlier this year, SEFCA launched the Impact Fund, a public-private partnership designed to reward high-achieving teachers who are doing just that. This video highlights a few of our heroes' accomplishments and their reaction to receiving this award. We're so grateful for your partnership as we continue building careers and changing lives in Georgia. At SEFCA, we exist to create success stories. It's what we live for, to help people find a rewarding career in the construction industry. Our 
goal is to help students improve the trajectory of their lives toward amazing careers. I know there's a lot of potential for really anything out in the industry. We build a lot of stuff. Like, we do exactly what the boys do. It's kind of a, a unique thing to see something that you can take and build, and it can be used for the betterment of somebody else. With support and collaboration from the Georgia Department of Education, the Home Depot Foundation, the Marcus Foundation, the Arthur M. Blank Family Foundation, and many other supporters, we are not only able to provide additional support, but also financial awards to some of the top high school construction teachers in the state of Georgia. What motivates me is how can I do it different? How can I teach the one that knows a lot something new that he doesn't know? My favorite moment as a teacher is when you see it click with somebody. Once you come in and get your hands dirty and you maybe you build your first table or you build your first birdhouse or whatever it may be, and all of a sudden you've got that excitement. This year, we had 110 construction teachers across the state engage with SEFCA. We went to visit a handful of programs to highlight just a few of those who made a big impact on creating success stories for their students. We wanted to capture some of their best practices and interview a few of their students. But what they didn't know is that we would interrupt their interviews and surprise them with a hand-delivered impact check. We are at Jackson High School in Jackson, Georgia, about an hour south of Atlanta. Uh, we are going in to see one of our top construction teachers in the entire state of Georgia. His name is Ben Lowe. We're going to be issuing an impact fund check today. Good luck. What's going on, buddy? How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good. Stand up for me. We are sending out checks to teachers all over the state. You may have heard we're sending out these things called okay. impact checks to over 100 construction teachers. Okay. Well, when you submitted your metrics, you ended up being one of our top 10 instructors in the entire state of Georgia. Awesome. And so I wanted to personally deliver this check for you. This is your impact check well, thank uh, you. from SEFCA on behalf of the SEFCA Board of Directors, the Georgia Department of Education, all of our foundation partners and industry partners. We are just so appreciative for all the work you do with your students throughout the year. We're thankful for the impact that you have on their lives and we just wanted to personally thank you for the hard work you've put in all these years. And well, thank you. Good to be out here with you. Well, and congratulations. You. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Oh, open it up. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this going to be a new truck? You didn't use to me. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. Man, thank you. I appreciate it. Open this up for us and tell us what's in there. Look at the white piece. Wow. Yes, sir. Will you say thank you? <laughs> thank you, Scott. Thank yes, you, Sefka. Pretty incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all you do. We appreciate you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. It's no hard work. Woo! <laughs> Man, I said I wasn't going to cry. So on behalf of the entire SEFCA team, to all of the people who worked so hard to make these futures and impacts possible, we want to say... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, y'all. Yeah. That's amazing, y'all. I, I, um, that's that's powerful. Every time I watch it, I know it's probably the first time you all have seen it. But hey, that's not that's not four or five teachers in there, y'all. That's all teachers in there. That's every one of y'all in there. 
um, because those those little nuggets, and those impacts, I, we know you're doing it. Um, it's it's happening all over the state, and so uh, we capture it and we go out and we we champion you um, and get behind you. And there's no reason why you shouldn't put you know you shouldn't benefit from pouring all these extra hours in and going above and beyond every single day on the front lines of the hardest job in our country, arguably, uh, and seeing it through and making those impacts, guys, and not and not not benefit from it. If anything. Um, you know, don't worry about working that second or third job, um, you know, lock in on your program and get kids to the next level. And hopefully this impact fund program uh, can definitely make it worth your while beyond the intrinsic value and, and, and just, um, you know, how awesome it is uh, to, to make these impacts and get these kids to the next level to change their lives. Uh, we're just trying to celebrate that. Um, truthfully, the money in there is not even enough, but uh, it's, it's something and we hope that um, you know, maybe it's a, a, a trip with you and your kids or you and your spouse or um, just, you know, being home or whatever it is, we want you to be able to benefit uh, because you're pouring so much into everybody else. And so um, that's it. I love y'all. I love what you do. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of, 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 of what you do and, and the impacts you make. And we're happy to tell that story to whomever we can. Um, so we're wrapping today. Listen, last few things. If you have questions beyond what we captured in the chat, we'll go through it and make sure we're getting back to people that, that maybe not have gotten an answer on something. You can email k12pipeline uh, at sefka.org. Any question you have from today or just in general, k12pipeline at sefka.org. Uh, and we'll route that to the right person. And we'll look at it as a team and make sure we're answering your questions. Um, the survey stuff we already talked about is going to tell us how we can connect from here on out more. Um, and, and, and capture some challenges and we'll start working on that but, but um, y'all are y'all are the best there is and, um, and and it's great to see it and again uh, whether it's you or your students somebody's got to be the best it might as well be you uh, somebody's got to have the best programs in the country that might as well be Georgia uh, we can lead on it we are leading on it we're going to keep going uh, final three points uh, engage with us engage with your industry partners and report those impacts and we're going to keep uh, championing you and, and bringing more resources to you uh, it's a pleasure to do it. We're here to support you um, and all the work you do with changing lives of young people. And, and we just want to know how we can help. So thank you all for joining us today and uh, have a good one. Until next Thanks time. Thanks for your time, everybody. You guys are rock stars. Awesome. You guys did great. Thank you for interacting.